Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, thank you, Laura, for that introduction. I'm Kathleen Hanna, Kennedy Chief of Metro Center for Reductive Services. First off, on behalf of our Sheriff Don Barnes and our police services team, thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you. It's an honor and a privilege to be serving this community. I would also like to take a minute to thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to be here tonight. It gives me great comfort to see the level of support and partnership and engagement shown by our community. In the last couple of years, um, I've been working with this community and while working in various capacities um, and various ranks, um, throughout my career, I was directly involved in emergency response to the Olisovia Hall Fire, Silverado Canyon mudslide evacuations in 2011. I was part of the mitigation process for the bonfire mudslides as a department commander. Even though wildfires um, are not our, our um, you know, cup of tea, I should say, uh, in wildfires, we police services have a secondary role and more of a supportive role to OCFA. And I'm here to talk about what resources we have to offer and what action my team and I and the Sheriff's Department would be taking in this type of emergency and response. Throughout my presentation, you will be hearing me talk about uh, incident command system, also known as ICS. And this is a highly standardized management tool that is scalable and uh, it's used to meet the demands of, of a small or larger emergency. It represents best practices and has become the standard for emergency management across the U.S. Um, this is available to all levels, from first responders to uh, government agencies, as well as private stakeholders, and it's used across the country for the purpose of truly bringing order to chaos. Today's topics are going to be uh, law enforcement preparation for potential disasters, specifically wildfires, how exactly we prepare, Resources of personnel, roles and responsibilities in law enforcement priorities, as well as evacuations, methods and tools such as communication and traffic control. Emergency preparation is a strategic in initiative for both the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the City of Rancho strategic plan. The OCSD has been significantly involved in emergency preparation and critical response to critical incidents, including responding to wildfires. To give some examples of some of the training that we attend within the department is at all levels from top to bottom. Um, we go through quarterly and yearly training. Uh, table talks, we practice and participate in simulation exercises. In fact, last year the Sheriff's Department organized a simulation exercise in the city of Tustin. This year we're going to have it in the city of Rancho. For, in fact, we're having it next week. We conduct an incident command system exercise such as uh, table talk exercises a few times a year. For example, yesterday we had a tabletop with one of our school districts. And we organize, manage, and participate in a multi-agency, multi-discipline critical incident response exercise, usually with the OCFA, with the school districts, or our churches. In fact, our RSM council members also share their support for emergency preparation and training and in October of 2021, Council approved the use of ARPA, ARPA funds for emergency preparation for line staff to be trained in emergency management as well as critical incident response. We'd like to take a minute to discuss our contract leasing model. 
The city of Rancho contracts police services with the OCSD. We have 29 staff members assigned to the city of Rancho, uh, various ranks and positions. And uh, one of the benefits to contracting with the OCSD is the fact that we are part of a larger resource pool. We have and we can bring resources upon request. Those are some units that would be available to us <laughs> at department level. We have approximately 1,400 sworn deputies in the jails and operations. And unless they're in a fixed post and unavailable to respond, a lot of those people would be available to respond. We have approximately over 500 sworn deputies assigned to operations, 50 field CSOs, and approximately 30 investigators uh, between um, in the city of Lake Forest and Aliso Viejo. We also have three and a half platoons, um, again, platoons assigned to our sheriff's response team and that's over 200 deputies that are assigned to um, the mobile field force team. They're trained to specifically handle emergencies and not only in county, but out of county. Now, the sheriff's response team is a tactical concept adopted by the OCSD in 2012 and consists of this group of individuals that, that um, train quarterly and can be mobilized for a variety of emergencies and disasters. Out of these three platoons, we have one that is available 24 seven to us in case of an emergency. And we also have the Code Charlie um, emergency alert option, which is a plan that notifies our surrounding agencies in case of mutual aid some type of mutual aid need. Now, an incident command system, or ICS, says that logistics win wars. Having personnel is key. And we have the personnel of the OCSD is a large department. If the city of Rancho needs resources, we're gonna have the resources. Some additional resources that we would be working with and stakeholders um, are going to be American Red Cross, OC, Animal Care Services, Mission Viejo Animal Control, OCTA, and our, our school districts. I'd like to take a minute to talk about our law enforcement roles and responsibilities. During a major event, we have numerous agencies that work together to mitigate the impact. The OCSD works in coordination with OC Emergency Management as well as our OCFA. Moving through the event, the four phases of an emergency event of mitigation, preparation, response, and recovery. All the entities I just mentioned, we would be collaborating with. Even though law enforcement plays a secondary role in case of a fire, it's a vital role. We provide support for evacuations and traffic control, and we are police services and law enforcement 100% responsible for it. We unify command with OCFA to ensure that all decisions are efficient, consistent, and timely. Fire and police share the same mission and the same objectives, most of the objectives. We, as law enforcement, support OCFA, and our goal is to protect life and property, coordinate public information and emergency notification, facilitate evacuations and traffic control, and provide security for fire evacuations areas, as well as assist with repopulation. How will you receive emergency alerts? And um, it's gonna be based on the severity of the incident. Alert OC may be used to contact residents by phone, by email, by text. 
If you have not had a chance to sign up for Alert OC, please do so. We can also base alerts on specific mapping as well as zip codes or phone powers or the entire county. Other avenues of alerts to the public are going to be through our social media platforms as well as apps such as Ready OC, American Red Cross, and uh, FEMA apps. How we are planning to get people out, we're going to use uh, every layer and every, every possibility and every option that we have. We're not just going to use one form of evacuation and notification. Uh, we're going to use alert OC social media, air support, PA system, and door-to-door -door notifications. We keep track of our displaced families with um, a new app that, in fact, the Sheriff's Department is going to um, try out this simulation that we are um, planning for next week. Yes, government agencies are in fact responsible for alerts and warnings. Um, however, all alerting systems have failure points and you are your own best advocate. If you think that you are, you feel unsafe, please take action. You don't necessarily have to wait for some type of warning from, from, from us. Evacuation uh, zones, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the zones. They are, um, the plans are adaptable, they're incident driven, they're incident dependent, and they, uh, please make sure that you take the time to familiarize yourself with your zone. And um, also, shelter in place in case of a significant fire might be an option as well. OCFA did so for our dispatch center during the bonfire. To conclude my presentation, I'm here to convey to you that we have the training necessary, that we have the resources necessary. We're collaborating with OCFA. We have a plan in place and we understand and discuss challenges, potential challenges, especially to the city of Rancho. And we are ready to exercise the plan in the event of a need. Given the history and support of support and understanding from our community members, we ask our citizens to cooperate with evacuation orders if, if uh, in the event that we get to that point. It's difficult, if not impossible, to provide an engine to shelter in place every citizen that refuses to evacuate. That is why it's so important for our, our citizens to cooperate as much as possible and, uh, and evacuate when, uh, when those warnings uh, are given and those orders uh, are, are posted. And with that, I thank you for your time.